It's located in the secret chamber underneath the moon, Githranki area. The first thing you have to do, there's two ways to get this legendary. There's two ways to get to the secret room. The first way is to collect the sacred items in a different zone, but this is the quicker way. So as you can see, it's rusted and you cannot turn the statue. You have to turn, turn both statues, but I figured out an easy way to do it is you can use grease to grease up the statue so that it will turn properly, but you have to take off any fire items because it will ignite the grease. So take off any fire items, splash grease on the statue, and then turn one statue west and the other one east. So on the text it says to turn one where the sun rises in the east and one where the sun sets in the west, and that will open up the secret chamber. You can move this pot out the way to make it easier to get through. And once you're in the chamber, you just have to destroy the first crystal. And then in the second chamber, you can sneak in and disable the alerting mechanism. It's good to use a rogue so that you have higher chance for rolls. And then there's two ways to get to the third chamber. You can run around the back. And there's two crystals that you have to destroy on the third chamber, plus a mechanism you have to remove. So you can run around the back and destroy the mechanism from the backside and disable the detection from the backside, which is easier. And the other way is you can use the long jump. So you can use the Githranki long jump ability and there's a small ledge that you can jump from one side to the other. And you can destroy the crystal from the ledge. These crystals have piercing defense and certain defenses like poison. And so if you are planning to get to the final chamber, without the mechanism that stops you being enclosed. So there's an item that you can place inside of the mechanism to stop it from trapping you. But I figured out another way to get through without needing that mechanism. But you need a lot of range damage. Fire damage seems to be very effective. The pylons have resist certain resistances. So if you inspect the pylon, it will tell you the resistances. But I noticed that piercing resistance regular arrows are not very effective but fire arrows are very effective so if you have some fire arrows or fire spells in your bag then you can use them otherwise you want to make sure you have your casters not trapped inside the train chamber because it will help you you only get four turns to defeat the pylons and then once you defeat the pylons quickly enough then you will be rewarded with the legendary mace the legendary mace is the blood of Lathander. Once per long rest, when your hit points are reduced to zero, you regen 2 to 12 hit points. Allies within 9 meters also regen 1 to 6 hit points. So that means if you die, you actually um, have regeneration of hit points. I haven't tested if it stops you completely from dying, if you take more than those amount of hit points, but it seems like it could be a stop death, plus heals around you. It also sheds holy light in a 6 meter radius. In combat, fiends and undead standing in the light are blinded unless, the, unless they succeed a constitution saving throw. And it also gives you so the spell Sunbeam is 6 to 48 damage, radiant. It does a huge beam in front of you and it also blinds uh, all creatures in the path. So it's a frontal cone, a beam, a big straight line. And you can only use it after a long rest. Thank you very much for watching.